Hi everyone. Hey, hey, hey. It's Daydream Austin, aka Oya Bumi. Welcome to another episode of My Arisha Journey. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. So before I get started, just wanted to remind you that you can email me through my website, daydreamalston.com, if you would like your own personal Idafa or Ifa reading. Idafa or Ifa reading can uh, give you little snippets and ideas about your destiny. Um, it can tell you who your head Arisha is, what Arisha are standing for you at a particular time, all of that fun stuff. Oh, it can also tell you if you're slated for initiation or not, things like that. So if you're interested in getting your own personal Ifa reading, contact me through daydreamaustin.com. Okay. So I wanted to talk to you today about something that is pretty important that doesn't get enough attention here in the diaspora or here in the Western world, right? This is something we need to talk uh, about more often. I am grateful to the elders who make it a point to discuss this because it's very serious shit, y'all. Okay, this is very important. And... Uh, I will be sharing in the description box below a link to this excellent web ser series that this EI did about this topic. It's awesome. Okay. We're going to talk about egg bay. And this is something that's been coming up in my readings with clients. Um, you know, not for everyone, but there are certain people who have egg bay. And so they come back and they're like, well, who is egg bay? What is egg bay, you know? And it's a good question because for a long time, I didn't know either. So, egg bay. One of my clients asked me, what's the difference between egg bay and ancestors? So, I would say, um, the way I put it is, the ancestors are your physical family, right? The family you share your bloodline with, your DNA, um, your gene pool, you share those things with your family here on earth. And of course you have attachment and bonds of love sometimes, <laughs> things like that. But our egg bay are our family in heaven. They're our astral mates or heavenly mates. So we don't share that blood connection, that DNA connection or that gene pool, but they are our family. Just like we have a family here that's mimicked in heaven, we have a family before we come here. Um, some people have very, very strong ties to Egg Bay and um, things like that. So it was interesting because, you know, another client was like, all right, so she was like, yeah, those are our, our, our heavenly mates or our astral mates. She was like, are they good or bad? Or are they malevolent or benevolent? And I thought that was an excellent question because if you research Egg Bay and sometimes just the things you hear are like horror stories. Is this really a benevolent uh, spirit group that supports me or what? And my answer to her was that it's a mixed bag. And I say that because you can have Egg Bay who care about you just you know like your family here care about you so much so your egg bay in heaven care about you and your well-being but but there are certain instances where they can uh become an opposition to you an obstacle to you where you will feel like they are bad or malevolent and i'll give you some examples one example is uh, in my studies, I found in Arete Meiji a verse that talks about uh, this man who was building a house here on earth. And he's building, you know, building up his home and, you know, probably the excitement of building your own home, knowing that you're going to move into it. Well, at the same time, his egg bay, right, his astral mates, his heavenly mates or family are in heaven mimicking his action. They begin to build a home and they're doing so with excitement because they're saying, oh, our son is returning home. We must have a house for him. But returning home means that he's going to die, right? That they're like, yeah, we're going to bring him back from earth. 
so we can be with them because that like that's a big deal for Egbe to be with with their loved one so the priest tells the man in that uh, verse like look we have to do some work with your Egbe you have to receive Egbe or, or you need to do this for Egbe because if you don't once you finish building that house and they finish building their house you're going to die leave the earth and return to your Egbe but of course that man is not ready to go right it's too premature so that's an example of how an egg bay can love you so much, but be an, in opposition to you. Another example is that there are verses that talk about a child of egg bay, right? Not being able to have a, a wedding or a big wedding because there was an agreement made that if they have a wedding on earth, that on that day, they would return back to heaven, which means they would die on that day or soon thereafter. So in a case like that, a Baba or Ia who reads that information may tell, you know, the client, hey, make sure you don't have a big wedding because you can return home on that day, home meaning heaven. So imagine this is such a joyous occasion and you're running to get married and you're like, yo, I'm so in love, yeah, yeah, yeah. And your egg bay is like, come on back now. You know, and all of a sudden you back in heaven like, damn, I didn't even get to, you know, experience this. It's because there was a pact. There was an agreement made with Egbe before you left or before the person left heaven and came to earth. Another instance where it can feel like Egbe is malevolent or bad is for um, women this happens uh, quite often. I'm not sure that it happens to men as often. But for women, there are women who are beautiful, intelligent, spiritually aware and conscious, kind, you know, things like that. But no matter all of that, they cannot be in relationship. They can't stay in relationship. Something will come and, and force the relationship apart. It's always something. Uh, if that woman was to do some type of investigation, E5 investigation, she may find that she has an egg bay husband, which is a husband of heaven. And depending upon, you know, how strong this egg bay is or the pact or agreement that was made, he may not be willing to let her go. So she can do a bunch of offerings if she even ever finds out, right? Say she's lucky enough to find out that's the issue. She can do offerings, sacrifice, and all of those things. And her egg bay might be so strong that he will not release her. And the only way he would release her is to do what Maya Luo calls um, or to pay a tax to the egg bay husband, which is essentially uh, initiating to egg bay. Right? So once again, the egg bay can be a benevolent force, but can make trouble for you because you guys had an agreement in heaven. And that's what I'm learning about Egg Bay. Egg Bay uh, really takes agreements, pacts, promises seriously. You do not want to break an agreement with Egg Bay, right? So in the book, Egg Bay Heavenly Mates by Ayo Salami, it says, when they cause trouble, it's because we are not in balance with their energy or we have offended them. So something's off kilter, right? And, and we've done something and oftentimes it's that we are not honoring an agreement that was made between us. Something else that I saw that I thought was so interesting and speaks to the trials and tribulations of Egg Bay children who don't know they're Egg Bay children is um, another portion said Egg Bay make make people go through a series of traumatic experiences until they fulfill fulfill these promises or make atonement excuse me so that's very important it's like over and over again and i know people like this you know um where no matter what happens, 
you know, you can move ahead and then all of a sudden you hit a wall or something horrible happens and you're like, <laughs> so devastated. Like, what the hell is going on? People, some people have egg based. So if you're someone who has had multiple traumatic experiences and you can't for the life of you understand why, and this is ringing a bell to you, please contact me and consider doing an EFI reading. And we can investigate whether or not you have egg bay. Um, and honestly, it comes up pretty much right away. <laughs> like, um, if you, you need that support, right? Because even though we know this information, say like, you get the information, right? You've been through so much in your life or you're a woman who can't stay with a mate because of your egg bay. Um, and you find out the reason is because of this egg bay. It doesn't take the sting away. It doesn't make everything instantly better. But now you know the cause and can deal with it. Um, so sad for those people, for our ancestors who didn't have access to this information and suffered as a result of it, right? I also had a Baba who said that egg bay manifest in different ways for males and females. He said for males, egg bay manifests in a way where the man can't keep a job. He can't make money, right? And think about what men value. Men value caring, being able to care for themselves, take care of themselves and their family. So it's like it, it impacts that one very important area for real men, you know? Oh my God, they can't keep, they can't make money. Like, that's a big deal for them. Whereas with women, it impacts relationships. Um, Egg Bay might do something to cause a rift in relationships, arguments. Um, one of the things the Baba said, which alerted me to my Egg Bay um, connection and how I needed to, like, really move forward with Egg Bay and getting to know, know them was that they would take your jewelry. Like, your jewelry will, will disappear and... That might cause an argument between a woman and her mate. And I was looking for one of my Oshun bangles. It just, my brass bracelet all of a sudden is just gone. And I'm like, and this is when I thought I was Oshun, right? Where is my bracelet? Where's my bracelet? Um, but it disappeared. And I remember the Baba saying, you know, right after my bracelet went missing, you know, this can be a sign of an egg bay issue. And funny enough, when I got the pot, the egg bay pot, when I received egg bay, I haven't initiated, but when I received egg bay, I found the bracelet. It was amazing. So I just wanted to bring this to you because I know there are people out there struggling and suffering and are at wit's end and probably feel like they're going to struggle and suffer for the rest of their lives because they don't know what to do. Right, you, You've tried everything. You've tried this and you've tried that and it hasn't worked. And what is it? There is a connection between you and a very powerful group in heaven that you have made an agreement with. And as a result, there are some troubles and different issues cropping up for some of you. So if this resonates, contact me. Um, we can do an EFI reading to investigate and find out if there's anything you can do to make things better because I do understand the frustration with this. But I do want to close with letting you know that Egg Bay is good. Egg Bay is benevolent in most cases because, you know, they love you and they are your mates, right? Your mates, your family in heaven. But there can be issues. You can go through a series of traumatic events in your life. Um, you can have them causing trouble because you may not be um, in balance with the energy or have honored a pact, okay? Uh, also, just quickly, if you are someone who has um, a mate coming through in your dream, constantly having sex with you, that could be a sign of egg bay and maybe some trouble and so if you're having that consistently, it's good to get a reading just to make sure children, if children come in, in dreams, that can also represent Egg Bay. Okay? Okay. Thanks, guys. Just wanted to let you know. I hope this has been helpful. 
Blessings to you. I hope you are all well. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Bye.